Well, we're continuing to think about the question, how do we pray? Uh, and what Jesus teaches about how to, to pray. Now, that question that arises because of our, our concern to grow in him, to grow in our love for him, to know more of uh, God at work in our lives. And uh, so I want to turn your attention back to Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 9. And again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And as I always say, other Bible translations, good translations are available. But it says this, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And I want to take your attention this morning to the line in verse 13 where it says, give us today the food we need. Give us today the food we need. Or if you've learnt this in older versions, you may remember it and may have recited it as, give us this day our daily bread. It's a prayer asking God to provide and to care. It's an expression of trust. So uh, remember that this prayer is, is set against the context of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and one of the things that he will talk about, uh, it comes up right in the next the next section uh, down into verse 19 onwards he, he, he's going to talk about not storing up treasures for yourself on on earth effectively sort of having to worry so much that you're constantly anxious about providing for tomorrow we're not to be anxious for tomorrow uh, because we're to trust god uh, to provide we're to trust the god who is the father who gives good gifts to us uh, we're to trust god uh, the father uh, the one who uh, who holds our lives in his hands uh, the one who promises that he will give good gifts you know uh, jesus says look if a, a if, if a father is asked of a bread will Will his son receive a stone from him? Or if his son asks for a fish, will he give him a, a, a snake instead? The one who we're told knows the very hairs on our heads. Uh, the one who values us more than the birds, more than the flowers of the field, and they don't have to worry. So, in our prayers, we are learning not to worry, not to be anxious. And one of the things that I pray, and I think is behind these words, is simply help me to trust you, God. Help me to learn to depend on you and to rely on you. And in my prayer, I'm learning more about God's abundance and grace and goodness. I'm learning to say that I know that God is good, that God has been so good to me that I can sing that song, all my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good. At Luke um, picks up on uh, the same teaching of Jesus. Um, in Luke chapter 6, uh, with his uh, version of this major chunk of, 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 of teaching, 
Uh, and in Luke chapter 6, he says, verse 37, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. Uh, the amount you give will determine the amount that you give back. In other words, life in Christ, life in the Father's care, is about turning our back on rivalry and competition and seeing others as a challenge or as a threat. And that's important when we think about practical needs. So there is a time in prayer for praying about our practical and personal situations. Uh, within this, I would include when uh, we are concerned about somebody and their health, that we, we pray for them. And I think it's a good thing to pray uh, for healing, uh, knowing that God may choose to miraculously heal. Uh, God may choose to use, the, for his providence, to use the skill of doctors and of medicine. Uh, but also that God may say, no, the, the time has come to take this person from us uh, to be with him in heaven. That is full healing, the healing of eternal life. Uh, and that sometimes God says that the purpose is that there will be suffering with that suffering working for good. Remember Romans 5, that suffering produces perseverance and perse perseverance, hope. But, but we trust God to do what is right and what is best, but there is no rule against asking. It is good to ask, and he loves to hear our requests. And it will be about practical provision, that God will provide food and clothing, that God will provide housing, that God will provide employment and work. I, I believe it is good to ask for those things uh, because we have a father who loves us. So we are talking to that loving heavenly father. This is just normal family life. And, and if we get that sense when we pray that, pray that it's not about formalities or rituals, it is about a family conversation that we share our joys and our delights and our hopes with him. And we share our needs, our concerns and our fears with him as well. Being ready for him to disagree with us, to challenge us, uh, knowing that he knows better than we do what our needs are, and yet expressing them to him. Uh, and notice then that focus, whether we call it our daily bread or our bread or our food for today, on today. That, that there is both, um, for the believer, a sense that there is more than this, that we are not just living in the now, uh, but also that we are to live our lives now, uh, so that we're not so caught up with our worry and anxiety about what might happen in a week's time or a year's time that we lose the joy of existence now in our relationship with him. So prayer is about nowness. It's about living in the moment in that respect of saying, I enjoy this time with my father, with my family, my spiritual family now. But if I can push us just a little bit further, those older versions talk about our daily bread. And yes, we want to talk about physical food. But I can't help but remember when I talk about bread that Jesus when tempted in the wilderness, uh, said, when the devil said, why don't you turn these stones into bread, said, 
man doesn't live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from God. That there is a need for spiritual food. That at this point, when I ask for my daily bread, for my food, I am asking God to feed me with his word. This might be a good time in your prayers to pray that God will speak to you from scripture. That you will enjoy his word. That you will be challenged by his word, that you'll be comforted by his word, that you'll be corrected by his word. It's a good time as well to pray for the provider. So we pray for the providers of our physical food. Pray that God will provide pastors and elders, preachers and Bible teachers, Sunday uh, school and youth teachers. uh, So that we may all be fed well in Christ. Jesus will also say, I am the bread of life. At most of all, this prayer for our daily bread is that we may know him better. Now, this is the prayer of hungry people asking that Christ will satisfy and saying again that Christ is enough for me. So one of the ways that we pray is that we express our dependence on God and a trust in him. Christ is enough for me. I trust in the good father.